Yeah, I wasn't gonna rap at first, mm. but okay. I was around Vaughn. Vaughn was telling me like, man, you might as well start rapping. Two, three. <laughs> 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 All right, so you do you believe that King Von actually did put a hundred thousand on? They head? proved it. They telling on they self. Come here. 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 So why would y'all let somebody who turned their life over and get legitimate money throw y'all life away? If Vaughn would have loved y'all, he would have told y'all, stay in the studio, do this verse, do this hook, let's go on this tour, let's do this, sign to my label. We've all heard those stories coming out of Hollywood where someone with tons of potential gets derailed by one bad decision or a string of unfortunate events. But in the case of Marcus Smart, better known as Muwap, it wasn't just bad luck. It was the choice he made to become King Von's puppet that ended up sealing his fate. Check it out. Tell them people it was no shit. Muwap, a rapper from Oblock, was just starting to make waves in the rap game back in 2020. Some people were even saying he could have been the next big millionaire in rap, and it's easy to see why. He had everything going for him. Serious street cred, the backing of King Von, a voice that stood out, and he was tight with Lil Durk, who was at the top of the game at that time. Muwap seemed set to blow up big time. <laughs> I ain't no shit though, brody. Love you, brody. I love you too. But just as he was about to drop his debut project, everything came crashing down. He got caught up in a serious situation, going down with four other dudes for allegedly being involved in the broad daylight murder of FBG Duck. We convicted six men for the murder of rapper FBG Duck. FBG Duck, whose real name is Carlton Weekly, was shot and killed while shopping in the Gold Coast back in August 2020. Muwap grew up in Parkway Gardens, also known as Oblock, and was naturally caught up in all the beefs that came with it. Back in the late 2000s, Oblock was known as Wick City, and that's when they started beefing with a GD set called STL EBT. The exact reason for the beef is a bit murky, but things really kicked off in 2011 when a well-respected Wick City member named Odie Perry was shot and K-worded. No one was ever officially charged with Odie's murder, but it was allegedly payback from STL EBT for the death of a 15-year-old boy named Tuka. After Odie was murdered, Wick City changed its name to Oblock, and the war with the GDs has been on ever since. Not much is known about Muwap's early life, but what's clear is that he was super tight with King Von. In fact, he was with Von the night he was killed in Atlanta. Muwap was also allegedly involved in taking out one of Von's biggest enemies, FBG Duck. It was King Von who first pushed Muwap to start rapping, and Muwap talked about it when he appeared on the Drew Mania podcast back in August 2021. I wasn't gonna rap at first. Mm. But I was around Vaughn. Vaughn was telling me, like, man, you might as well start rapping. He decided to dive into the rap game and started dropping tracks in 2020. Even though he was a newcomer, Muwap was allegedly already pulling in numbers and was gearing up to release his debut project. But just when it looked like he was about to blow up, he got slapped with that murder charge related to FBG Duck's death. What makes this whole situation even more twisted is the talk that King Von was the one who allegedly put a $100,000 bounty on FBG Duck's head. The investigation is still ongoing and now it's been reported that a witness speaking to the FBI has claimed that King Von placed a $100,000 bounty on the Chicago rapper. This has left a lot of people scratching their heads wondering if Vaughn really cared about Muwap as much as he claimed. If Vaughn was making legal money and had the connections to help Muwap make it in the rap game, why would he let him go down the path of taking someone's life? Why not steer him towards a successful career instead of dragging him into something that could ruin his life? Vaughn was selling millions of records at that time. All his money is legal. He getting show money, feature money, all of that. So why would y'all let somebody who turned their life over and get legitimate money throw y'all life away? 
What's wild is that King Vaughn learned everything he knew about the rap game from OTF Dirk. Dirk schooled Vaughn on how to navigate the industry, but unfortunately Vaughn didn't pass on that knowledge to Muop. Instead, Vaughn kept Muop close as his hitman, using him for street business rather than teaching him how to succeed in the music industry. Muop, for his part, leaned into that role. He chose the life of a hitman, a killer, and ultimately King Vaughn's puppet, a decision that landed him in prison and cut his rising rap career short. Come here. Come here. Get out of fucking ground. I ain't do nothing. Yeah, yeah, you didn't do nothing. Relax, 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 relax. Okay. You guys with him? So how did it all go down like this? How did someone with so much potential get caught up in a life that led to such a tragic end? Let's take a deeper dive in. On the morning of August 4th, 2020, the scene over in O Block was typical. Guys chilling on their block, openly selling weed, which they casually called Tuka and Zaza. This is my dog on King David. On B, that's my roadie. They were so comfortable, they didn't even mind discussing their whole operation while being recorded on a live camera. It was like they had zero worries about broadcasting their crimes for the world to see. But as reckless as that sounds, later that day they'd show just how far this wild attitude could really go. That same morning at around 4am, FBG Duck wakes up in a foul mood. He's still feeling the sting of his brother Brick's murder, so he hops on Facebook and posts a status, basically letting everyone know he's angry and hoping to run into his brother's killer. Little did he know that fate would have him doing just that on this very day. Fast forward to the afternoon of August 4th, and Duck is out shopping in the Gold Coast, a fancy area often compared to the Rodeo Drive of Chicago. It's the kind of place where you'd find high-end stores and tourists enjoying the luxury vibes. Duck, still reeling from everything, is just trying to live his life, but little did he know his enemies were closing in on him. While Duck's browsing around, two cars pull up 30 minutes away from O Block, driving right to where he's shopping. At about 4.37 PM, Duck steps outside the Dolce & Gabbana store, probably thinking it's just another day. But then out of nowhere, around four masked shooters jump out of the cars and start firing at him. Duck tries to fight back. He pulls out a gun and attempts to return fire. But fate dealt him a cruel hand that day as his gun jams. In that split second, he's hit, dropping to the ground as bullet after bullet is pumped into his body. Some reports say Duck was hit as many as 38 times, an almost unimaginable number. And just like that, he's left there to die while the shooters speed off, leaving chaos in their wake. A man and a woman who were with Duck at the time of the shooting are also injured, but by some miracle they survive. As Duck lay on the ground fighting for his life, people start gathering around scared and confused. Some even whip out their phones to record the aftermath of this brutal crime. Eventually, a 12 minute video of the scene is uploaded online showing Duck struggling in his final moments. The video is so graphic and shocking that it's not something you'd ever see on YouTube, but it really drives home just how much destruction these killers were willing to unleash, not just on their rivals, but on the very streets they lived in, the same streets their neighbors called home. Duck's murder carried out in broad daylight and in such a public place made headlines around the world. It wasn't just another shooting in Chicago. Reporters were comparing it to the mob hits of the 30s. On August 4th, 2020, it looked like an old-time outfit attack here on Chicago's Oak Street. Two attack cars, four shooters, and a hail of bullets. 1930s gangster, he was a new millennium rapper, FBG Duck. The sheer boldness of the crime meant that Duck's death was all over the media, and in a heartbreaking twist, Duck's own mother found out about her son's death through the news, before she even had the chance to identify his body. To make matters worse, she had to witness people out on the streets cheering when they heard the news. Somebody actually clapped in the crowd when they pronounced my son uh, being deceased. I hit the floor. I couldn't believe it. The pain didn't stop there either. The mayor of Chicago added salt to the wound, dismissing Duck as someone who fancied himself a rapper but was really just another gangster, clearly unaware that Duck had been trying to turn his life around. After his brother's death, Duck had made a promise to his mom to focus on music and leave the street life behind, but now that chance was gone forever. For over a year after FBG Duck's murder, justice was nowhere to be found. Duck's killers were out there living their lives with zero consequences seemingly 
seemingly untouchable. But what made it even crazier was how bold they were about it. These guys didn't just disappear into the shadows, they were out on the streets and all over social media flaunting every bit of clout they could get from being involved in such a horrific crime. It was almost like they were proud of what they'd done. Following Duck's murder, it was no accident that the cops started parking several cars around O Block keeping a close watch. They were there to prevent the inevitable retaliation, warning the local community to keep their kids off the streets. Because things were about to get ugly. The cops knew exactly where the bullets that took Duck's life had come from and it wasn't hard to guess that someone might be sending some back in that same direction any day now. But building a solid case to actually catch Duck's killers wasn't going to happen overnight. Luckily for the authorities, those involved in the hit started dropping hints and clues from the moment they got back from the scene. On the very day that FBG Duck was killed, Seymour from Oblock posted a picture on Instagram. In the photo, he's doing the GD killer hand sign with a caption that read, Anyway, GDK, which was a nod to a King Von lyric. Muwap also jumped on a song to brag about the killing. On the other side of things, Lil Durk, who was Duck's rival, went live on Instagram not long after Duck's murder, casually stepping off a private jet. He didn't say much, but the comment section was flooded with people talking about Duck's murder. It was almost like Dirk was putting on a show, letting everyone, and especially the authorities, know that he was nowhere near Chicago when it all went down. It was the perfect alibi, and he made sure everyone knew about it by tweeting just hours before the hit that he was out of town. Lil Reese, another Chicago rapper, even chimed in to back up Dirk's alibi. Of course, people started speculating that Dirk's quick livestream after Duck's death was all part of a calculated move to prove his innocence. But on the flip side, Dirk also tweeted, Rest in peace, Nuski, a reference to his cousin just an hour and a half after Duck was killed. So clearly, Duck's death hit home for Dirk too. And if that wasn't enough, just a day after Duck's murder, King Von dropped a new track with Lil Durk called All These N-Words. While the song didn't specifically mention Duck's death, the timing of its release was impossible to ignore. The track was filled with Von's usual talk about having bodies from way back, and the fact that they still went ahead and released it right after Duck's murder showed that Oblock and their affiliates had no intention of keeping quiet about what had happened. And the disrespect didn't stop there. The same day the song dropped, Nemo 6 went live on Instagram, casually smoking a blunt while people in the comments asked if he was smoking on Duck. Nemo confirmed it by showing off a custom Duck Cali pack, making it clear that they weren't holding back their disrespect. He wasn't the only one either. 600 Breezy dropped a snippet of an FBG Duck diss track, teasing whether he should still release it now that Duck was dead. The level of disrespect was off the charts. Then, just 10 days after Duck's murder, King Von was seen at Icebox Jewelers in Atlanta picking up a bunch of custom O-Block chains encrusted with diamonds for his crew. He even posted a list of the names of the people who were going to get these chains, making it crystal clear who was in his inner circle. Now, we don't know exactly what was engraved on each of these chains, but if you take a close look at the backside of Vaughn's extra large O-Block chain, you get a pretty good idea of what it was all about. The chain was engraved with the names of nine fallen O-Block associates, a crosshair symbol with the number 64, a reference to the old name for O-Block, Wick City. In the tagline O Block for Life, Vaughn kept the biggest chain for himself while the smaller ones were handed out to the rest of the crew, including people who are now in custody for Duck's murder. C Murder and Muwap, two key players, were seen flexing their new chains all over Instagram, proud of their new bling. <laughs> And DQ, another O Block member, was personally gifted his chain by King Von himself. Now, just to set the record straight, King Von had been planning to give his guys these custom chains for months before FBG Duck's murder even went down. He wasn't just handing them out as a reaction to Duck's death. In fact, Von was seen on social media as far back as May of 2020, talking with his crew about these chains, getting their input, and even working on the designs at Icebox long before Duck was taken out. But here's where it gets interesting. It wasn't until 10 days after Duck's murder that those chains really started popping up, being flaunted all over the place. That's also when Icebox dropped a full video on YouTube where you could see King Von explaining that certain chains were being customized specifically for getbacks, revenge missions, essentially. For example, there was a chain made for the Sherrod squad with the vengeance of Sherrod being the inspiration behind it. So with his team fully iced out, his biggest rival out of the picture, and arguably the most significant getback of his career 
here under his belt, it would have made perfect sense for Vaughn to distance himself from the streets and pull all his focus on his music career. And in true King Vaughn fashion, the day after receiving those Oblock chains, he was back on Instagram teasing new tracks. But here's the thing, while Vaughn was trying to hype up his new music, his fans were way more interested in the drama surrounding Duck's death. The comments were going wild, with everyone talking about the murder instead of the music. Eventually, it got so out of hand that Vaughn had to step in and tell people to chill out, asking them to stop mentioning Duck. Even though he tried to shut it down, Vaughn couldn't avoid the topic for long. As the days went on, both he and his crew started leaning into it, getting more comfortable with the fact that their fans were constantly bringing up Duck's murder. Just a few days later, Vaughn was on IG Live with DQ, shopping in a store, and he just couldn't resist throwing some shade at the ops, telling his viewers that there ain't no more FBG. It was a small jab, but the kind of thing that kept the drama alive. I'm gonna smash that on y'all, I ain't gonna put like that. See, and we know y'all ain't gangsta, y'all on the internet. We know y'all ain't gangsta, y'all ain't trying to do that. Ain't no more FBG. But one of the most notorious examples of self-snitching in this whole saga surfaced on August 31st, 2020. That's when an interview with Boss Top from Oblock dropped. In the interview, Boss Top is surrounded by his guys on the block, talking about life before the fame, his relationships with King Von and Lil Durk, and more. But here's the thing, if you're going to bring a vlogger into your gang's territory, you might want to be a little more careful about what you say and where you say it, because this interview ended up being loaded with some pretty incriminating details. Right off the bat, they walk onto the block, and the first thing they do is tell the camera that their homies are smoking brick and duck. Now, if you check the comments on that video, you'll see a bunch of people pointing out that there's a car parked nearby that looks eerily similar to the one used in FBG Duck's murder. Sure, it could just be a coincidence, but it definitely raises some eyebrows, especially considering that this interview was recorded less than a month after a high-profile gangland murder in the middle of a busy street. So here they are, inviting vloggers to their block, recording them, and possibly implicating themselves in the process. In this very interview, Boss Top makes the situation even worse. He steps in front of the camera and tells the vlogger that he's willing to answer any questions. Naturally, he's asked about FBG Duck, and his response is, well, it's something. Boss Top immediately says that Duck shouldn't have dissed their dead homie, T-Roy. But then he catches himself realizing he's said too much and quickly shuts up. Do you know him? Who Duck? Did you know him before? Hey, like everything? Like that. I don't know. Okay. All I know, don't say that about Troy or rest in peace. But the damage was already done. Boss Top, clearly flustered, tries to redirect the camera's attention to the hitters standing behind them. One of those guys even does a nose-wiping motion, a known gang gesture. Then to top it all off, Boss Top goes on to call his O-Block chain a trophy. It ain't no more for the chain. This is just like, it's like a trophy to this our brother, you know? Now, this most incriminating part of the interview was eventually edited out of the video about a year before the arrest went down, but the clip was already captured by then and still circulates online to this day. And even though that section was cut, all the original comments are still there, with many people pointing out that Boss Top basically pointed directly at one of Duck's shooters. But let's be fair, Boss Top wasn't the only one putting his foot in his mouth. As time went on, other Oblock members kept showing up on camera and on social media, leaking more and more details that that seemed to tie them directly to Duck's murder. So fast forward to October 2021, and things really hit the fan. Muwap, Seethang, Seemurda, Los, and a dude named Kenny, all from Oblock, got slapped with a RICO indictment for Duck's murder and a bunch of other charges. At first, nobody had a clue what kind of evidence the feds were sitting on, but then the news broke. Muwap and the rest of the crew got caught on camera. According to the indictment, here's how it went down. Someone spotted Duck shopping in the Gold Coast area and tipped off the shooters from Oblock, letting them know exactly where he was. And wouldn't you know it, surveillance cameras caught a group of guys from Oblock running down the stairs and jumping into a couple of cars. These cars were then seen speeding through downtown Chicago, blowing through red lights lights as they raced to where Duck was at. When they finally pulled up to the spot where Duck was shopping, everyone piled out of the cars and started firing shots. It was a straight-up ambush, 
and after they took Duck out, those same surveillance cameras caught them heading straight back to O Block like nothing happened. Now, getting caught on camera committing murder is already about as bad as it gets, but it turns out that wasn't even the worst of it. The cops also found a handwritten notice in one of the cars used in the hit. And guess what? The note had C. Murda's phone number, plus his Facebook and Instagram handles. If that wasn't enough, they also found photos of the O Block guys posing with the cars they used in Duck's murder. They were practically handing evidence over to the authorities on a silver platter. After all this went down and Muop got locked up, a fan reached out to check in on him. Muop, trying to sound tough, responded with, I'm great and thanks for reaching out. My head high as it could be, love for reaching out, I'll be out soon. But the reality of the situation wasn't as optimistic as Muop was making it out to be. It turns out that Muop and five other guys from O Block were found guilty of FBG Duck's murder and now they're all sitting behind bars. Now, most people would think that going to prison for something like this would be the worst thing ever. But apparently Muop isn't just okay with it, he's actually happy to stay behind bars. Word on the street is that he's even asking for a longer sentence. He's probably the only rapper out there who wants to stay locked up, maybe even forever. Why? Well, it's likely because he knows that stepping outside those prison walls could be a death sentence. He probably figures he's safer inside where he doesn't have to worry about revenge or anyone coming after him. At this point, it's starting to look like Oblock might be in serious trouble. They've lost one of their biggest stars, King Von, and now some of their key members have been hit with these RICO cases. The days of Oblock running the streets might just be coming to an end.